Now here I'm going to just do my mini rays because of the situation. In other words, if he has total garbage, we'll give him a chance to fold the hand, yeah, even though I don't expect him to. And now I'm going to do a half pot bet. In other words, we're down to just blind versus blind, and I'm going to kind of play this with a similar strategy to how I play heads up, sit and goes, which is to, when I raise pre-flop, I tend to min raise, and uh, when I bet after the flop, I tend to bet half the pot pretty much every time. And it's, those bets are big enough that if your opponent just has nothing at all, they can throw their hand away. And you're managing to steal the pot. But when they do have something, you know, if they're calling, you're keeping the pot smaller. There's more decision points in the hand. Actually, let's bet 350 here out of the 550. Bet about two-thirds of the pot. That really isn't a great card. Could have made a straight for someone, but with all those flush draws, I don't want to give a free card. And we still probably have the best hand here. Well, our opponent could have been slow playing an eight, but I doubt it. I mean, with the straight draws, the flush draws, I don't think he'd be slow playing an eight. And now he's going to bet a thousand into us. I don't think he has anything. He just doesn't think we have anything. So here I'm going to pop him up to 3,000. If he shoves in, we're going to have a tough decision, but... It just didn't seem like there was any real chance that he had the eight. So, uh, nope, he showed us pocket fours. He was drawn slim the whole time and fortunately didn't get there. And that's a nice pot for us, though. 9,000 chips because he overplayed his pocket fours. You don't really give us credit for an eight. You know, once it comes eight, eight on the flop and then another eight on the river, it really doesn't cross your mind that we have an eight. I mean, you know it's possible, but it's pretty insignificant part of the range of hands you'll put us on. But why couldn't we have a five, a seven, or another pocket pair, you know, besides deuces and threes? You know, I can understand him betting the river, you know, in case we have a straight or something like that, maybe we'll pay him off. But once we raise to 3,000, you know, he could only beat a bluff with that call. I mean, that's the funny thing there is he had a full house and he could only beat a bluff. But I think that was, in other words, that hand really wasn't any better than, like, ace-king, three of a kind with a good kicker. I think he'd win just about as often with ace-king making that call in the river as he would with the pocket fours. But once someone has a full house, you know, they're like, well, three of a kind doesn't beat a straight, doesn't beat a flush, you know, but I got a full house. That beat the straights and the flushes, too. But to be honest, you know, why would we raise him there if we had a straight? I mean, if I'd raised with a straight, I would have, I guarantee you, I would have been considering it a bluff in my head. Queen 10 suited. I like this hand a lot. This is the kind of hand I like to play when things are, are deep stacked. But here we've got a raise, a call, and a re-raise. Now, if this guy had called, I would have called 200 more in a heartbeat. And if this guy had made a big raise and had gone call, call, I probably would have called with the Queen 10 because I'm closing the action. But the reason I folded here is not just because I didn't want to pay that price. I didn't want to pay 900 more to see the flop. I mean, and that was a good enough reason by itself, to be honest. I mean, this guy's now put in 1,000 chips. He doesn't have enough left to give us the implied odds that we need to play a hand like Queen-10 against a re-raise. But the other reason, too, is that we could have called the, uh, the 900 chip raise and then have this guy shove in. And now we've put 900 extra into the pot, and we have to throw the hand away and not even try to get lucky on the flop. So uh, there's a big difference between calling a raise and closing the action. In other words, you're the last person to do a decision on this street. After you call, that's it, time to turn over the next card, whether it's the flop, the turn, or the river. So when you're closing the action, it's much safer than if there's people who are still behind you who can now put in a further bet, a further raise, and uh, force you off the hand. And if they don't raise enough to force you off the hand, well, maybe they raise enough to uh, you know, make it too expensive. So it's like maybe you're priced in, you have to call, because it's like, wow, I've put in 900, i got to put in 700 more to see the flop. The guy did a min re-raise. You know, I'm getting too good of a price to, to fold. But... Now, you, overall, you've invested way too much money pre-flop. Even you've just been kind of sucked into it, you know, one little bit at a time. Well, here I called the raise just because I thought there was a good chance we had the best hand. And then we flopped, you know, a baby flop, not likely to hit his hand. I expect us to either, uh, well, <laughs> I'm wrong, but what I was about to say was wrong. I expected that we would either win or we would lose to a hand like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack. You know, maybe a smallish pair, sevens or eights. But instead, the guy flopped a set, and 
trying to trap us. So that's the nice thing when you're trying to induce bluffs from people. You know, you're not betting yourself. So he was trying to induce me to bluff, and I was trying to induce him to bluff, and that means that uh, he made a full house and didn't win much for it. Now here we have a total junk hand, but again, I just came in because, you know, the third person to limp in, it seemed pretty unlikely that anyone was going to raise behind us, though, of course, it was very possible because we got three players who might do something. And this is the spot where a lot of people might try to bluff. In other words, if it checks to me, Everyone is checked on every street. If I bet right now, no one is going to think I have a king. But they are going to think that I have something because I'm betting into four people. So the king pairing the river certainly isn't going to make people think that, oh, he has three kings. You know, they're not going to throw away a hand, you know, like pocket aces because they put me on three kings. But they might give me credit for a six or a four. And if they had only a three, they could throw it away. So even our winner here, who did pair the bottom card three, if I had bet the river, he might have folded. 